Rollerblading is home to a phenomenal amount of talent. If you want any clearer example of this, all you need to do is look at the major boot brands and the people who ride for them. You've got established brands who have been around for decades like USD, Razors and Rollerblade who all have exceptional talent on their team. Then you've got newer brands who've not been around for long but are already making their mark like Them Skates that's got an ever expanding team of iconic riders. Then you have newer brands like Mesmer, Icon and most recently Faction who've got this really nice mix of older riders who have a good reputation and new up-and-coming skaters who are really making a name for themselves. And then there's brands who have smaller aggressive teams like FR who have Anthony Potier as like the poster child for their brand, Seba who have CG Wellsmore flying the flag for them, but the aggressive inline market is still relatively small in relation to the extreme sports landscape and as a result that means there is an insane amount of talent floating around there without a boot sponsor. In this video, I'm going to be discussing some of the best free agents in rollerblading, that is exceptionally talented rollerbladers who are not getting hooked up by a skate company. First up is Seattle's Josiah Blee. Josiah Blee is one of the best handrail skaters of all time. I know that's a bold claim, but hear me out. In addition to doing insanely technical switch-ups on handrails that are just downright confusing, he is responsible for some of the rarest standalone tricks ever performed on handrails. One example is this perfectly executed fakie 540 acid. Another is this 450 back salve that he did in his Pro Skate promo for REMS. He is also among only a handful of people in the entire world who have ever landed a hurricane fish brain on a handrail. That list includes Ryan Arnold, who did a hurricane fish brain down a handrail in his Vine Street section, and John Bellino, who laced one quite a few years ago. That is a very exclusive list. And the clip that he's probably most known for is this 360 topside torque sole to 360 topside torque sole perfectly executed. That is difficult just to say. Josiah Blee has been releasing jaw-dropping video sections ever since the early 2000s. The first section I saw him in was Hyphy by Ivan Nares and Vinnie Minton in the early 2000s and he was doing things like 270 backside unities, full cab kind grinds and 450 royales down handrails and he was still a relatively small kid at the time. He rose through the ranks for REMS, he got a pro skate from the brand in 2016, but after that, things kind of fell apart with them. They would have told me if I would have like gotten a pro skate and they were like, yo, you're not getting a single cent, I would be like, this is an honor, I'm pumped. But I was like, I still am kind of broke, but I was super struggling at that time in my life. And he was like, dude, this will help out REMS, this will help you out, we'll get you royalties will like uh do do all this stuff he had like uh he had got my hopes up in a way you know mm -hmm. and then when the skate sold i remember asking uh he sent me like a prototype and then one pair of my skate or no two pairs of my skates one that i could like put on my wall i remember asking him and then one to just skate and then I remember uh, I skated those skates. And then when it came time to like get another pair, he was like, oh, we don't have any more. So I was like, oh, sick. Like they must, they must have sold, you know? So I was like, is there any like chance I could get like any money? And he was like, yeah, we'll wait till like it all is like gathered at the end, you know, when we like sell all of them. So you'll get a bigger chunk. So I was like, sounds good with me. And then uh, that day just like never came. In 2018, he released a farewell REMS edit, just announcing that he was quitting the brand and his luck kind of went from bad to worse after that because in 2019, he had to have knee surgery because he tore his ACL and his MCL and it put him out of skating for quite a long time. But while he was waiting for surgery, even though he was still injured, he released a street section that had ridiculously good tricks in it. These included a 450 Royale, a med spin back Savannah, and this absolutely dizzying combo. 
After he took time to heal, he had a comeback section in Chance of Rain 4, which had this phenomenal torque slide on a drop rail, as well as a bunch of other just mesmerizing clips. It was great to see him back in action. It proved that the knee surgery and extended time off skates hadn't done anything to his ability. In fact, it just seemed like he came back even hungrier. And earlier this year, he closed out Carter LeBlanc's rain check with a heap of footage that proves he's still out there in the streets. He's still gathering clips at lightning speed and they are still very, very impressive. Since leaving Rems, Josiah's been trying out a bunch of skates. He was skating the Razor's Cult for a while. He was skating the Rossi's Fifth Element for a while. And most recently, he appears to be riding USD Aeons, but he's not riding for any team. He has not been hooked up by any skate brands. And it's quite surprising because he is still really, really talented and he's still relatively young. And from what I understand, he's currently working on another full length project. Now, the reason for this may have been his injury, that may have put off brands because they're worried about it reoccurring again, or it may have something to do with the fact that he's not very active on social media. He's not one of these people that just puts up a bunch of clips regularly. He seems to favor working on full length projects with his friends and they have a kind of traditional view on skate content, just taking time to really work on something, get it right, get a full finished article on the go rather than just regularly putting out sections. But Josiah would be a great addition to any team. Given how well he skated on Colts, I could definitely see him being on Razors. How well he skated on the Rossi's Fifth Element, I could see him easily being on them as well or even USD, although USD does have quite a big team. Basically, by the looks of things, it seems like he can skate pretty much any skate and he would be an amazing addition to any team. Next up was one of the most surprising and impressive comebacks in rollerblading history, and that is Demetrius George. Demetrius George went from disappearing from the rollerblading community entirely, he didn't have any social media, to randomly picking up skates again after coronavirus hit, creating an Instagram account and then just dropping viral clips every other week. And he was not taking it easy at all. He wasted zero time getting back to stunt skating. In fact, I would say that the skating Demetrius George did in his comeback was much heavier than the skating he did even when he was pro for USD. The tricks just got bigger, faster and scarier. He was doing lightning speed rail transfers. He was doing big disaster grinds. He was doing switch ups on steep, scary handrails. He was just going in. He even won up Carlos Pianowski, who did this disaster backside in Fruit Booter, by going to the same spot and doing disaster topsole. And he did all of this while his daughter sat in the background and watched her iPad. I could just imagine the conversation when she got home to her mum that night. Her mum's like, what have you been doing today? And she's like, oh, I just watched daddy throw himself down this massive double set of stairs. The kid's mum would have been like, sorry, what? He also placed at numerous competitions in the US, including the Boshy Pope Skate Off, the Seattle Street Battle, and a Bay Area Street Contest. And he went over to Denmark and did the same thing, but not before he stopped off in Barcelona and just absolutely murdered a bunch of street spots. But with all the highlights, there were also some low points for him. He had frequent injuries, some of them really bad and taking him off skates for weeks at a time, sometimes even months. He also got his Instagram account hacked and lost all those followers that he'd gained with those mental tricks. And he's not been as active since he's got a new account, but he is still regularly posting footage. I'm not entirely clear what Demetrius's motivation is or what he actually wants from this or if he wants anything at all because he's still skating his old stock of USD Classic Thrones. The only current option on the market if he just does want to keep skating the throne shell would be Mesmer's. He doesn't really fit in with Mesmer's image and I can't imagine they'd want him on the team because they have a pretty clear vision of what they're doing. Also, it doesn't really seem like that's something he'd be interested in either. He doesn't appear to have tried any other boots since he's been back, so it kind of feels like there's not really a place for him in any brand, if he'd even want there to be, because he's a family man, he has a successful job, it's not like he needs 
the very small paycheck that he would get from rollerblading. It kind of seems like just the thrill and excitement of putting himself in that much danger is all the motivation he needs. The next rider on the list is one of my favourite skaters of the past decade, possibly even longer, Cody Lampman. His 2017 section, simply titled Cody, is one of my absolute favourites. I've watched it countless times and I will probably continue to watch it countless more. Since that time, he's released Ashes in 2020 and Phantom in 2021. What I love about Cody skating is he encompasses all the things that make up a great traditional street skater. He's well-rounded, he has got a very extensive trick vocabulary in terms of grinds, in terms of switch-ups, in terms of all those, you know, grinder blading things that we've kind of heavily leaned on over the past few decades, but he's got this other element to him that is just incredibly fascinating to watch. He has got a really, really interesting eye for an obstacle. He knows when to go big and then when to make things clever and intricate and creative. He's one of the best wall rail skaters I have ever seen in my life. He has got such a variety of tricks that he can cram into really tight enclosed spaces and in one of his sections he manages to do a wall ride to a wall rail to a wall ride out. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that before. He also has some of my absolute favourite wall rides including this alley -out wall ride full cab out and this just utterly confusing one where he appears to soul grind while wall riding at the same time. I just don't understand how he did that at all. If traditional handrail skating's your thing, he's got that covered. He can do full cab alley out top sides on numerous spots. True spins, he's also got those down. He can either do them standard or he can do them negative. He is also an excellent purveyor of a pud slide, which is an incredibly rare trick in rollerblading. Not that many people have it down the way Cody does, and he finds a way to do one in almost every section that he's released in the last five years. He can do them standard, he can do them as the basis of a switch up, he can cab 270 into them, and this one in Ashes is arguably one of the best pud slides of all time. What I also like about Cody is he is very careful about how he presents himself. You can tell that he thinks a lot about how his sections are constructed and the kind of feeling that he wants to emanate. And it's just it just makes his parts have so much more significance, have so much more impact. He's also created such a kind of strong brand for himself as well. He's usually dressed head to toe in black. His skates are usually black. He's got this kind of mysterious vibe about him and it just gives his skating that extra distinctive edge and makes all of his footage instantly recognisable. Cody has been sponsored by boot brands in the past. He was riding for USD and released several promos for them. Then he switched over to Shadow because it kind of matched his style better and released more promos for them. But when Shadow was closed down, he kind of floated around without a sponsor. He's been skating them skates for several years now and them skates actually released his latest section, Imposter. They hosted it on his YouTube channel, but according to Cody, he is not on the team. Cody has said that when he's ordered things from them skates in the past, they've sent him free skates. So they have hooked him up with skates in the past, but he's also said that he buys his own skates and there's been no mention of him being officially added to the team. He's never been invited on a trip, so as far as he's concerned, he doesn't actually ride for them skates. I believe that riders like Cody are so important to rollerblading because you've got a bunch of people out there who only seem concerned about Instagram and getting as many views as possible and putting out footage just all the time, constantly bombarding you. And it just kind of makes you less appreciative of their efforts because you see them all the time. With someone like Cody, he only puts out sections every like couple of years. And when they do drop, it's, it's something that you cherish. It's something that you watch over and over again. And he only seems to release them when he's got something to say, when he's got a really strong image or idea. And that just makes his sections so much more timeless. And I really believe that Cody would be a great asset to a team. 
I could see him fitting on them skates, although he probably would only ever skate the Black 909. Or I could also see him fitting on Standard Skate Co. alongside people like Yandriel Silverio and Brian Weiss. But it's one of these things that would Cody want to do the commitments that come along with that, like appearing in team videos or appearing on tours and stuff like that? Or would he be happy just to stay in the shadows? It's a difficult one to answer, but yeah, Cody's talent is unbelievable. No list of the best free agents in rollerblading would be complete without a female skater on there, and they don't come much better than Fabiola da Silva. She is one of the most successful female competitive skaters of all time. She has won over 50 international medals, including seven X Games gold medals and one X Games silver medal. In fact, in the space of seven years, Fabiola only lost the X Games once, and when she lost, she came second. That is how dominant she was for the better part of a decade. In addition to her wildly impressive competition history, she had her own pro frame from 5050, she appeared in the iconic Disney movie Brink, and she has her own video game character in Rolling. In addition to being the most successful female athlete in X Games history, she is also the first female to land a double backflip on a vert ramp. Despite the fact that she had such a long-running successful competition history and she was pro for Rollerblade that whole time, Rollerblade never gave her a pro skate, which feels like a massive missed opportunity because every time she appeared on that podium, she could have been holding her pro skate in one hand and holding her gold medal in the other hand. If that's not a phenomenal advert for a pro skate beamed around millions of TVs around the world, I don't know what is. A few years ago, she had a pro skate from Caltic, but that felt more like a gesture to kind of cement her legacy rather than a legitimate pro skate because it was only for kids. She couldn't wear it, she couldn't promote it, so it's not really an adult pro skate. In recent years, she's been getting hooked up with Rosies. They've been giving her free skates, and there's been calls from loads of people in the community demanding that Rosies give her a pro skate. In fact, even in an interview, Fabiola herself said that she would love to get a pro skate from Rosies, but it never materialized. And over the past 12 months, she's been spotted skating USD Aeons. There is no denying that Fabiola's career peaked when she was appearing on TVs all around the world and winning the X Games every year, but she's still competing at a very good level. In fact, she's still winning national competitions. She teaches regular skate schools, so she's a great ambassador for the sport. And despite the fact that her glory years were quite a few years ago, she is still, without question, the most famous and recognisable female skater of all time. Fellow vert skating legend Takeshi Yasutoko recently got a pro skate from USD, which was long overdue. I would love to see Fabiola get one as well. I understand why Rosies didn't do it. They want to focus on their current team. And I would imagine that even if Rosies did release a pro skate from her, there would be people saying that they were just trying to cash in on her fame. But it would be nice if some brand took the initiative potentially even Rollerblade to just kind of commemorate the fact that she was so successful for them for so many years and put her name on an adult skate that she can ride and promote. You wouldn't even need to get new footage. You could just use her archive X Games footage, create a time capsule, show her doing a couple of clips now, and that would be enough. We're halfway through the video, so I just want to give a giant shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're listed on the screen now. You can join the Patreon for as little as £3 a month. You'd be doing me a massive favour and helping me make these videos, and your support would be greatly appreciated. That's enough of that. Let's get back to the video. Canada has long been home to some of my favourite skaters to watch, from John Bergeron, Kaya Tursky, Richie Eisler, Dustin Morbeski, and my most recent favorite is Stuart Bratty. Stuart does not have many sections online, but if you go on the Express YouTube, he has featured in a bunch of their videos over the years. He also has footage in the Ivan Nares video, Valo 6. He's got a couple of street sections out in recent years. One is only one minute long, one is only two minutes long but what they lack in quantity, they more than make up for in quality. The only way to describe Stuart Bratty's skating is flawless execution. 
every trick he does is just stomped with so much authority and conviction like he just knows exactly what is going to happen when his feet hit the ground. It feels like every time he stamps his feet it's like an exclamation mark on the trick. He opens up his section in Anti-Rocker, which came out in 2021, with one of my favourite zero spins from the last five years. It is not the biggest by any stretch of the imagination, but the way he tucks his legs up, holds them in perfect position, and just lands with his feet perfectly close together and rolls away is just, I could watch that over and over. Again, he's got the traditional street skating down, he can grind up rails and spin out, he can hold a topsail on a kinked handrail for as long as he likes. He has just got such obvious control, whether he's balancing a long grind or holding a long tow roll. Both of them look the exact same as far as he's concerned. There is no wavering, there is no hand jiggling, everything is just solid. He's also found a way to incorporate wizard skating into his aggressive skating that doesn't look forced, it doesn't look contrived, it doesn't look like he's just jammed it in there. All of his wizard skating appears to either be a setup for a trick or a continuation of a trick, rather than just kind of trying to jam the two things together. And it gives you an idea of how the two genres could blend together more in the future. Speaking of wizard skating, he is also easily one of the best wizard skaters in the world. If you want examples of that, just go onto the Wizard Skating YouTube channel. He features in a bunch of videos, but my absolute favorite is Field Report 1, where him and Leon go back to back, and they're just skating on a little flat concrete plaza. There's no obstacles, and he is just looking so graceful and flawless, and the way he just holds toe rolls or does these really intricate maneuvers and makes them look like the most natural thing in the world. I have tried to do several of those, they are not natural, they are not easy, you will still fall over and get hurt. Stuart Bratty previously appeared in Valo Maneuver Mondays and like I said, he was in Valo 6, so maybe he was getting hooked up with Valo for a little while. He's been riding Sebas for several years, but I don't think he's on the team. There's been no official announcement. He doesn't list them anywhere as a sponsor and I can understand why he's not been picked up by anyone because he doesn't play the social media game. He's not regularly putting up footage, but when he does, it is the kind of footage that you want to watch over and over. He also doesn't release regular sections, but again, when you get his sections or you get footage of him in a video with other people, it's the footage that stands out. It's the footage that you want to watch over and over. Express released a new video earlier this year called Dad's Keurig. Stuart Bratty has got the last minute of the video and the last minute of the video is the icing on the cake. He does this perfect topside torxel round a ledge he does some really interesting combos and weird lines where he circles back on himself. And there's just so much distinction about the way that he skates. He, he is a standout no matter who he's skating with. Next up is one of the biggest rollerblading stars of the past decade and one of the most successful, Yorkshire's Joe Atkinson. Joe has phenomenal competition credentials. He's been European champion, he's been world champion, he won Winter Clash in 2019, and he's been the FIES World Champion three times. That's in addition to winning countless regional and national competitions. In fact, he just recently won a real street contest in France. In addition to being an absolutely formidable competition skater, Joe Atkinson has got an unbelievably impressive video catalogue. He appeared in the Cayenne Project videos, Delphon Dio, Formosa and Quadro. He also filmed a street section in Sydney with Dom West called Joe Atkinson Time Sydney. He then released a bowl section along with Dom West called Blue. He appeared in the Dom West video Blading Burma. And so far this year alone, he's appeared in Joe in San Francisco, which was filmed and edited by Ivan Nares, and he's appeared in Funky Bowl Time by John Lee. He also had a great promo out earlier this year for Edo Goods. He has got videos for days. In addition to winning over the crowds, international events with his competition performances, and impressing us with his dazzling video sections, he's also been responsible for some pretty monumental moments in blading history. There was of course his viaduct backflip that went viral in 2018. 
the Manchester double loop that served as the skate promo for his pro skate from Rosie's. And then he won up the Manchester double loop by doing an even better one in Australia in 2020 that was captured beautifully by Dom West. Basically, Joe has been responsible for pushing boundaries of what is possible in competition skating, in park skating, and in street skating, and he proves that we have still not even come close to finding the limits of what is possible on rollerblades. Joe has previously skated for USD for several years, in fact he's got a bunch of promos on YouTube. He skated for SSM and had an unbelievably good street section that was filmed by Dom West on the streets of London. I have lost count of how many times I've watched that section, it is so enjoyable and it still holds up to this day. His last sponsor was Rosie's, who did give him a pro skate, but when he went to renew his contract, he wasn't happy with the terms that they gave and he decided to walk away. Since then, he's been riding Salomons and I know for a fact that Joe has been courted by other skate companies. Joe is living proof that you don't have to follow the standard model for sponsorship. You don't need to try and get on a boot company. He has been wildly successful just riding around on old Salomons. If you've got enough talent, you can still make it without the support of a big company. Last on the list, but by no means least, is the French machine, Julien Kudo. Julian is undeniably one of the best competition skaters of all time. Julian Coudot has been competing and placing at international events for two decades. Two decades. He started appearing in international competitions when he was like 12, 13. He's in his 30s now and he is still regularly on that podium. He has the impressive record of winning one of the longest standing events in rollerblading, Winter Clash, three times. He's won the male pro event in 2010, 2012 and 2023. No other male skater has achieved that feat. In the last year alone, he has been on an absolute tear. Last year, he won the World Roller Games in Argentina. Then he followed up by winning Winter Clash at the start of the year. He then won the World Cup event and the spine competition at Fies Montpellier. He followed that up by winning NL contest, then winning the Marseille Pro Bowl contest, and the most recent win was at the Inline Cup in Cromerits. Basically, at the moment, it feels like Julian Cudo is unstoppable. If he lands all his tricks in a run, he is very, very difficult to beat. The guy regularly throws out double backflips with spins in the middle, does unbelievably technical rail and coping tricks that involve 540 grinds or grinds to 360 grind switch ups. The level that he takes it to, the absolute limits he tries to push rollerblading in competitions is insane. In addition to his undeniable competition skating prowess, he has got a huge back catalogue of sections on YouTube that spans decades. There's footage of him on there as a tiny kid skating his local park in Bercy. There's footage of him when he was on USD, when he was on Trigger, now when he's just a free agent on Salomon. There is probably over a hundred videos on there. It would take you days to get through them all. In the last 12 months alone, he has released three video parts, one in Texas and two in South America. He's also released two full park sections. One was filmed in South America and the second one was the hugely popular Heads Up. The only way to describe Julian skating is big. Everything is big. Big airs, big spins, big flips, big technical grinds. Everything is big. He just wants the stunts, the adrenaline, the fear factor, the wow factor, the ability to just stun anyone who sees what he does, and he succeeds. And that is not just restricted to his park skating. On the streets, he goes hammer time every time. This is also not a recent phenomenon. He's been doing this for years. If you go back to 2012 and watch his WRS uploaded section, every trick in it is a stunt.
Julian was sponsored by USD for years and despite the fact that he's always done well in international competitions and regularly placed in the top three, they just never really did anything with him. Then he decided to join Trigger, he got a pro skate from them, released a great promo that had a street backflip that was just nuts. as well as various other feats that were just absolute jaw droppers. He released a couple more promos for them, but then left after about two years. And since that time, he has been almost exclusively skating Salomon and just going on an absolute tear all over the world. Like Joe Atkinson, Julian Cadeau is proof that you do not need the support of a boot sponsor. If you're a good enough skater and you can do well at competitions and win some prize money, you can get around events will beg to have you there because they know you're going to put on an amazing show and you can find your way through that route but not that many people can do that not that many people are as formidable as joe and julian at competitions but it is a possible avenue to explore I've tried to get Julian on the podcast before without success, so I don't actually know what his motivations are or whether other brands have approached him. I'd be very surprised if other brands have not asked him to be on their team because who wouldn't want Julian Kudo? He is like a walking poster for your company. Every time he appears in all those photos and videos and competition edits and basically on the podium, you could have a walking advert. But it's not happened and i'm willing to bet it's julian's choice that's my roundup of the best free agents in rollerblading i actually have a list of about 10 other skaters if i put everyone that i thought of in this video it would last an hour possibly two hours there were just too many to mention i trimmed it down to those ones just because they're probably the most well known but if you want to see another one of these let me know i'll happily make a part two if this one is well received enough, let me know which ones you think are your favorite. Let me know which brands you think they should be on because some of them would be good fits for certain brands. And yeah, hopefully speak to you guys soon.